Welcome back. So glad to see you here at A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It's uh, it's Wednesday, I think. That doesn't have the date on it. I think it's Wednesday. It's hard to tell because right now every day feels like you're being humped. This is our seventh, I think. Seventh show? Seventh show without an audience. Uh, we did one in the theater before we left. Uh, we did three the week before the break, three this. So this is seven. Okay, this is seven. And uh, happy to be here. Wonderful to see you. Strange. It's strange, but it's lovely. I actually did the math and I've been isolating uh, for 20 days now. And did you know, and I just found this out, that the word quarantine comes from the Italian word quarantina, which means 40 days, referring to how long people used to be isolated during the Black Plague. So at 20 days, I reached the halfway point in a quarantine, which is traditionally when you start Googling the etymology of the word quarantine. So that checks out. Of course, and this is, you know, where my head goes, the word quarantine is really near the word quarter in the dictionary. And, and quarter, when I hear that, it gets me thinking about the old rhyme, two bits, four bits, six bits, a dollar. And that makes two bits a quarter if it's eight bits make a dollar. So, you know the old phrase like, here's my two bits? That means here's a quarter. Why is a quarter two bits? Well, it turns out our word dollar comes from the name for an old Spanish coin, dollar you know, which was like the old pirate pieces of eight. So each piece is a bit. Therefore, two bits is a quarter of a dollar. Are we still broadcasting? Good, good. As you can see, having no trouble focusing here. You also notice today I've ditched the suit and, and tie for a blazer and an open collared shirt, getting gradually more casual as the show goes on. By May, I'll be wearing nothing more than two band-aids and a grin. So, so look forward to that. Um, it started to sink in to me and my family that we're going to be here for a while. Right, Peter? Right. Right. That's my son, Peter, who just said right. Say hi, everybody, Peter. Hi, everybody, Peter. There you go. Last night, uh, my daughter insisted that we stop the chaos in this house and make a chore chart. She said, we're all adults now, so we're really like roommates, which is why while I filmed the show, I put a sock on the door. What I love about people, and I do love people, is that crises like this bring out the best in them. And the best people, of course, are not people, they're animals. And to prove it, in Colorado, a woman has trained her golden retriever, Sonny, to deliver groceries to a neighbor with health problems during the quarantine. Let's see him in action. Okay, uh, here's Sonny bringing the grocery list that the neighbor gave her to the owner, and here he is running the groceries back over to his neighbor. Works fine, he's part of the new delivery service, Dog Dash. Sonny's owner says she was inspired when she saw a story about a dog comforting people at a hospital. And she thought, wait a second, I have a dog that could help. And when I heard that, I thought, hey, I have a dog that could help. Benny. Come here, Benny. Come on. Come here. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, buddy. That's right. Let's go help the people. You got to come over here because the camera's over here. Come on. No, no, not over there. Come on. Look, look what I got for you. Look, look, I got a message for you. You need to bring this message to the neighbor. Look, okay, I have a prescription. I need my neighbor to go get my prescription, okay? I'm an old woman who needs, no, no. I'm an old woman and I've written my prescription on a piece of ham, okay? I didn't, it was out of paper. So, okay, here you go. You ready to take my prescription? Heart medication, I need it, it's very important. Take this to the neighbor who will take it to the pharmacy. Are you ready? There you go, there. He really wants to help people. He, you wanna help some more? Here you go, here, this is, this is, this is a letter. This is a letter. I have, these are my taxes. I have to get my taxes in, okay? So they're, or they're going to take away my farm. All right? Take this. Take this to the post office, okay? Don't forget to put a stamp on it, okay? Take this to the... the oh, he's so helpful. He's so help. Come here back here. No, there's more helping. You want to help some more? Here. Here you go. Here. All right, this is my grocery list. There you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. And that's just, that's just, that's just for you because you love helping. Okay. And that's how it works. Okay. Come here. Come, come here. He's got, he's, come here. Right here. Look at this. Come here. Come here, you. This. Here. You can have, you lick this. Now he's got the messages 
and he'll deliver them onto my neighbor's lawn in about two hours. There you go. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Bye bye. He loves helping people. What can you say? It's training. You gotta be firm. Now, while social distancing is working, we know the worst is yet to come. It's like we, we saw the asteroid come in through the atmosphere and we know that it hit somewhere out in the ocean and we're just waiting for the wave to come over the horizon. Well, I think the tide is rising because yesterday the White House announced they project between 100,000 and 240,000 coronavirus deaths. And with these devastating projections, it seems like President Trump now understands the gravity of the situation we're all in. He held a two hour briefing yesterday and his tone was far more serious. I want every American to be prepared for the hard days that lie ahead. We're gonna go through a very tough two weeks. But the president pointed out that as dangerous as this virus is, at least it's something to talk about. It's an incredibly dark topic, an incredibly horrible topic, and it's incredibly interesting. That's why everybody is, uh, it's, uh, they're going crazy. They can't get enough of it. Yes, this pandemic, which is crippling the global economy, certainly is interesting. That reminds me of Winston Churchill. We should fight them on the beaches. We should fight them on the landing grounds. Why? Because it's interesting. People can't stop talking about those Nazis. Listen, love him or hate him, that Hitler's got pizzazz. Now, even though the president appears to be taking this seriously, he still hasn't issued any order to shut down the whole country. He wants to leave it up to the states, who've been coming up with some pretty interesting excuses, like Alabama, whose governor recently said this. Joe, we are not Louisiana, we are not New York State, we are not California, and right now is not the time uh, to, to order people to shelter in place. Oh, no, no. Now is exactly the time to order people to shelter in place. You don't want to become New York or California. Sheltering in place is preventative. This is like saying, y'all, we're not pregnant. Right now is not the time to start using birth control. Let's get it on raw dog. But maybe the worst policy comes from Florida, which is currently suffering from a raging case of being Florida. Even though the state's infections are rapidly growing, the governor refused to shut down the state until today, and only then because leaving it up to the counties wasn't working. Here's a recent photo where one Florida county closed its beach, but its neighbor didn't. That's a tough choice for spring breakers. Okay, my dudes, should we go to body shots at Senior Frogs or sit quietly six feet apart from each other at Senior Responsibiles? One governor who's getting great reviews for his leadership in this time of crisis is New York governor and only guy allowed to make fun of Chris Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo. Governor Cuomo has projected an air of much needed competence during the epidemic and the people are there for it. Hashtag President Cuomo has been trending on Twitter and some people are taking this a bit further like the author of this op-ed entitled, Help, I think I'm in love with Andrew Cuomo? It's okay. These feelings are perfectly natural. Many Americans experience moments of being at least Andrew curious, if not fully Cuomo-sexual. The obsession with Governor Cuomo has recently gone to a really weird place because, and I'm quite surprised this is an actual headline. People are asking, pierced or not, the mystery over New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's nipples. Aha, a classic nipple mystery, just like man boob on the Orient Express or the talented Mr. Nipley. I promise I'm not making this up. I kind of wish I was. But internet sleuths are examining this picture of Cuomo that appears to show an outline of something that may or may not be a nipple barbell. Wow, a nipple barbell. If that's true, the Cuomo family are such gym rats that even their nipples lift. Do your nipples even lift, bro? My nipples can squat. Now, honestly, who cares? what's really underneath that polo shirt. The governor is doing a good job. Hell, some of our greatest leaders have been into body modification. Every school child learns about George Washington's wooden tongue stud. Lucky Martha. Oh, hey, remember those face masks we were told not to wear because they didn't work and we shouldn't bother? Well, apparently 
The CDC is thinking about advising everyone to wear a mask now, and their initial directive is being critically re-reviewed. Yes, not wearing face masks is being critically re-reviewed. Uh, critically re-reviewing is like when Avatar was a huge hit, then a few years later, we were all like, wait, did I actually enjoy that? I saw it three times, but the blue people talk to the sky horses by plugging in the hair, and then Sigourney Weaver has a space orgy with a tree. That's all, that's all I can remember. Unobtainium. That's it. But they still don't want civilians hogging masks that hospital workers need. That's why at his briefing yesterday, President Trump helpfully offered a wide and varied array of ideas for mask alternatives. You can use a scarf. A scarf is, everybody, a lot of people have scarves, and you can use a scarf. Scarf would be very good. I would say do it, but use a scarf. So you can use scarves. Most people have scarves, and scarves are very good, and they can use a scarf. You can substitute a scarf for a mask. You can wear a scarf. Do you want to know why those press briefings are two hours long? Do you want to know why? Two hours, two hours long, the press briefings, long hours, two of them. Two hours long, I don't know. But I do know you can wear a scarf. Not that a scarf is a bad idea. It may not prevent you from getting the virus, but if you're one of those people who have it but don't know you have it, a scarf will lower the chances of you transmitting it, which is really important. In fact, anything that covers your cough or your breath and also helps you from touching your face is a good idea. And it may not be a surgical mask. Any mask is a good idea. So if you go to the hospital, don't be alarmed if you wake up being treated by Dr. Steampunk Rhinoceros. So people everywhere have started improvising masks out of anything they can find, like this Italian man demonstrating how to use a feminine hygiene pad. Qua, qua, e qua. A questo punto la procedura è semplicissima, guardate. Uno. Due. That's very effective, especially if one of the side effects of coronavirus is leaking crystal blue fluid. And it's not just women's feminine pads. This guy made a mask by cutting up a woman's bra. His wife was pissed. Not because he cut it up, but because he put it in the dryer. I have been told that is something you're not supposed to do. I don't understand either. Another man used women's underwear. When complimented on his coronavirus panty mask, the man said... What's coronavirus? So apparently women's intimate products are a good safeguard against COVID-19, which is why I shoved an IUD up my nose this morning. Now at my age, I don't even know if my sinuses are still fertile, but it's good to play it safe. We have got a show for you tonight. When we come back, I will have an in-depth, gripping conversation with Ryan Reynolds in his native Canadian.